um, and we had a unique experience with with Matheson because uh, I published a, a bunch of his you know well known titles, yeah. uh, and then he, uh, he he asked me one day, you know, would you want to read my first novel? Uh, it was his first adult novel um, that uh, was was more of a mainstream novel, uh, and he had uh, he, he was a very insecure person in some ways, even when he became you know you know claimed author. Uh, and he said that uh, uh, he had shown it to his agent um, and his agent said it was too long uh, for a first novel, you know, of, uh, from a novelist who's trying to publish his first novel. Yeah. And what Matheson did, you know, unlike uh, uh, Bradbury, um, if Matheson was told no once, he would just put the uh, manuscript back in his drawer. Mm. Uh, so he sent me Hunger and Thirst. Um, it was, it ended up being like, you know, 700 uh, pages um, in book form. Uh, and, and it was, it was a great novel. Um, and uh, we published that. Uh, and then, you know, later on, uh, he uh, uh, found another novel he had written when he was uh, in, uh, in college. Uh, and um, we published that. And then finally, he said, uh, uh, well, I was going through my stuff. And I wrote a, uh, my first novel um, when I was when I was twelve, uh, <laughs> yeah. and uh, um, and I said, "Did you try to get it published?" And he goes, "No, I just wrote it and put it away." Uh, and uh, an afternoon, he, you know, write a book. <laughs> he, he sent it to me. You know, I thought it was it showed a lot of of what the future Matheson, you know, would be like. Um, and uh, you know, I, uh, you know, my only concern, first of all, it was a short. It was short, um, and my my other concern is that some people would, some you know, of the reviewers and critics, um, it would feel, even though the, you know there would be an introduction, that he wrote it now right. instead of you know writing it when he was twelve. Uh, so what we did is. Uh, I suggested that we put it, you know, as a uh, as part of the Richard Matheson Companion. So it would appear, it would be published um, in a larger, you know, book. Um, and actually, the reviews were very good for it. Um, and uh, so we exhausted everything, you know, th that he had. Um, well, I think I have a book here too. Actually, sorry to interrupt what you're talking about. Where is it? Yes, yeah, here. Just so folks know what we're talking about here. So uh, leave yesterday alone. Sorry. Yeah, that's the one he wrote. When, that's the one he wrote yeah. when he was at college in college, and um, he never wrote an autobiography. But uh, there's a second. Um, there are two manuscripts in that book. Yeah. There's one called Musings, which is um, um, a journal that he uh, wrote on and off uh, in the '90s. And in the early, you know, two thousands, uh, and uh, it's very insightful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the closest them. thing to a uh, an autobiography that he ever wrote. Yeah. Um, but th there are a lot of his books that are autobiographical. Um, the um, Leave You Know Yesterday Alone. Um, uh, it was, a, you know, autobiographical. Um, Beardless Warriors. Absolutely, um, yeah. I talked about his his time. Uh, in in the army, um, and uh, uh, and then you know musings, uh, he's talking about you know um, everything under the sun, uh, you know he even addressed addressed the question, which um, uh, you know I would have asked him, but I had the answer already, which was uh, you know why he never became as famous as someone like Stephen King, and he asked himself that uh, at some point. Um, and uh, he decided, you know, and I agree, that because he wrote in so many different genres, um, he wrote five westerns, he wrote mysteries, he wrote horror, he wrote sci-fi, um, he, he wrote in so many different genres that um, he was not like, you know, um, categorized as, you know, in, in any one genre. Um, and I mean, he wrote things that, you know, people have seen but they're not aware of. When they talk Absolutely. about the Twilight Zone, um, the one episode that is always mentioned is Nightmare at 20,000 Feet. Yeah. And that was written by uh, Matheson 
unchanged, it was not changed at all by Serling. Um, and was based on a short story, you know, Matheson uh, had, uh, had written. Um, he wrote uh, Duel, which was Steven Spielberg's uh, first, uh, uh, you know, major uh, film. Um, and then he wrote the, uh, uh, not the series, but he wrote the movies of the week for the Kolchak scripts, uh, for, the, for the Kolchak story. And um, uh, they were, you know, really big hits. Uh, on TV, uh, but when, when they, he, he was not someone who wrote um, uh, sequels. And when they, they asked him if he wanted to be involved in the series, he said no. Dan Curtis, who uh, directed the films, also said no. So the series and the movies of the week are, are two separate and distinct, uh, you know, um, uh, things that you know Matheson did. So he, you, you ask, you know, uh, people. Do you know who wrote uh, uh, the Kolchak? You know, was uh, uh, scripts. Do you know who wrote Duel? You know, right. um, uh, and, and uh, do you know who uh, uh, wrote? You know, the Nightmare Nightmare at Twenty Thousand Feet. You know, he he, he wrote um, like twenty two, I believe, Twilight Zone scripts, uh, right. and uh, is is you know wrote more than anybody else except Serling. He wrote a bunch. Beaumont wrote. Uh, Charles Beaumont wrote a bunch. Uh, other authors wrote a couple. Yeah, I think uh, Allison did a few of them too for the second season. And, yeah. You know. yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got. You know, there was. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, Earl Hamner uh, put out a book of of the Twilight Zone scripts that he wrote. Yeah. Um, but Matheson was the, was the one who wrote the most, and uh, um, but you know a lot of places. Uh, publications when they mention Nightmare at 20,000 feet they don't mention Matheson's name. Yeah and that still blows me away I mean it's, it's such a hard thing to grasp because when you think about it he truly is the man behind the curtain where everybody understands his influence but they don't understand who created the influence I mean I could ask just but anybody hey have you heard of you know Richard Matheson they no I don't think so and of course you can rhyme off any number of things and you know, great content, uh, you know, I Am Legend, uh, What Dreams May Come. Um, I mean, the list truly goes on and on. Like, oh, yeah, I know that movie. I know that movie. Right. Guess who wrote that? <laughs> so, you know, oh, okay, well, I didn't, I had no idea. And it's just, it's incredible. I mean, I, I you know, I think guys like Stephen King probably wouldn't even be the authors that they are, certainly, if it weren't, weren't for the influence of, of, uh, of Matheson. Well, and, King, uh, King has, has said publicly, mm -hmm that uh, Matheson was was a uh, major influence, you know, on him. I mean, uh, you know, Matheson wrote about uh, uh, vampires before, well before, you know, uh, uh, yeah. King. And, and uh, uh, then, you know, he wrote uh, Hell House, um, you know, a ghost story, which, um, uh, you know, at some point King, you know, uh, read it and uh, years later, you know, in a, his own idea, uh, you know, came to him. So, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, Matheson, uh, uh, you know, wrote a lot of things that, you know, no one else had, uh, um, you know, ha had done or had done as well as, as he did. Right. Now, do you foresee, because I know you've, you've had a really some extremely unique opportunities. I mean, I think that a lot of the stuff that you've had opportunity to be involved with and the folks you've had a chance to truly befriend is bucketless material for for most fans of, of fiction in general but certainly for you know the horror genre and i mean it's you know like you said when you when you talk about matheson you can't really say well of course i, I know he hated the moniker horror uh, i guess the terror genre but he was really a, a genre in himself um but you've also had an opportunity to actually go into his home not only have you know as a guest with supper but you've literally been I know you mentioned, I can't remember if you told me personally or through your one of your anecdotes in your newsletters that I think it was through both, that Matheson would say, here's my drawers, see what you can find, have at it. Yeah, he would, so. uh, um, he took me to um, uh, his garage where he had uh, 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 several cabinets and, you know, you open up each cabinet and, you know, there, there were treasures, you know, uh, uh, you know, there. Uh, he also had um, a, uh, a room that was um, behind his refrigerator, which is one room we didn't get to because, um, you know, uh, we couldn't, you know, move his refrigerator. Right. Um, but he had, uh, um, he had things all over the place. 
Um, you know, the one thing which, you know, um, he didn't do is he didn't save a lot of things that uh, some authors uh, did. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, Ray Bradbury had Don Albright, who would literally uh, come out from the East Coast to the West Coast to visit uh, Bradbury. And anything that uh, Bradbury was going to discard, uh, Don would, you know, would, would take. Um, Matheson, uh, you know, uh, didn't have anybody, you know, like that. And, uh, you know, there, there are people who are shocked when they hear that, uh, um, you know, Matheson's first draft, which was handwritten always, of um, I Am Legend, after he typed it up, he tossed it out. Oh, see, I knew where you're going with that, and I've already got chills, and uh, that makes me just sad to think about. <laughs> so I eventually uh, um, uh, convinced him to uh, not to throw um, uh, his, um, you know, for handwritten drafts away. I said, we can use them in a limited edition as bonus material. Um, so uh, one time he um, uh, faxed me, um, <laughs> he, he didn't, the, the only thing, um, he, he was not on, the, uh, uh, had no email. He was not interested in the internet at all. Um, RC bought him a portable email machine that he could plug in uh, and he used it once. And then he said, I, you know, I can't do this. Um, so other than a phone and letters, he, he had a fax machine. And um, uh, he, uh, he, he sent me a, a fax one time, you know, saying, see, I didn't forget. And it was an introduction he had written, you know, that we wow. used in one of our books. And um, we used the handwritten, you know, introduction, you know, as well.